the Department of Biological Sciences conferred its first PhD degree in 1950, and since then it's grown in scope and size. It's a dynamic and um, actively growing program with research areas spanning from subcellular molecular mechanisms all the way to ecosystem level uh, scale studies of carbon cycling, energy cycling, uh, with its streams and terrestrial in aquatic and terrestrial systems. It's a dynamic and active program with uh, active research faculty and uh, teaching faculty that provide opportunities for students at the undergraduate and graduate level for, uh, to conduct research. So the, the research that we conduct in the early lab is a combination of uh, animal behavior, ecology, and evolutionary biology on the one hand, and molecular and cellular biology and animal behavior on the other hand. So we're trying to find out the mechanisms by which animals can do the things they do and the ecological and evolutionary pressures that shape uh, these behaviors. Uh, we focus on a couple of particular fish species because of their unique characteristics. So for example, one of our species is a self-fertilizing hermaphrodite. It's essentially the only thing with a backbone that can clone itself through sexual reproduction. Because we're studying a species that essentially clones itself, we are able to answer some really cool questions about how the environment plays a role on our phenotype. We can place them into different environments and track their growth, uh, measure them as they develop over the course of a few months, even up to a year, and then see the differences um, between different individuals of the same genotype placed in different environments. Um, because they're all genetically identical, we can um, attribute any differences that we see in these individuals to the environmental factors. From an undergraduate perspective, the research opportunities are really limitless. Um, there's a lot of special programs on campus that students can get involved in starting in their freshman year, uh, which gives them four years to really navigate this whole process of becoming a scientist. Our research faculty come at the biological sciences from a number of different angles. So being here allows you the opportunity to get exposure to a number of different ways to approach your question. And this is what we call integrative science. And I think that's what we really champion here at the University of Alabama. My lab at University of Alabama focuses on herpes simplex virus type 1, so, and that's a virus that most of us have. About estimates between 80 and 98 percent of the population have this virus. HSV1 is a really good system, I think, with which to train graduate students. So my role as a mentor is to teach these students how to think analytically, how to design experiments, and how to perform what I view as just basic molecular biology. This HSV1 is one of the viruses that has an excellent genetic system worked out for it, this bacterial artificial chromosome system, so we can make mutants very easily, um, and they can use this virus and not only discover things about the virus and how the virus replicates, and causes illness, but at the same time they're really becoming good molecular and cellular biologists. One of our biggest breakthroughs in my lab in the past couple of years um, have been really identifying that HSV-1 is a, a causative agent in a lot of chronic GI conditions. Um, previously the medical field really thought of that as being Helicobacter pylori. Um, it's going to be, you know, tough to convince, but we're getting the data to show that it really is HSV-1. So we uh, work on physiology, comparative physiology, and we have sort of two major studies going on in the lab. One deals with understanding kind of the hows of digestive performance and the regulation of digestive performance. We work with fishes, amphibians, and reptiles because among these animals you see a wide array of feeding habits and we have this very nice spectrum from animals that feed fairly frequently to the point that they're almost constantly digesting, much like ourselves, to those species that feed very infrequently. So these animals will really allow us to look at that kind of relationship between feeding habits, that is how frequently they're digesting, or the periods between meals and the extent that they're able to regulate digestive performance. I mean, the Burmese python is the mainstay of our research. It's one of the first species that we looked at to demonstrate this very broad regulation of gastrointestinal performance with feeding and fasting. We're really excited about the, this PNAS paper that we have coming out very soon. It is the first publication of a snake genome that it stems from the work from this lab, demonstrating that pythons have been a great model for understanding 
know, studying very extreme regulations of physiological performance. We're an up-and-coming program. We're gaining national visibility. Uh, we're uh, moving into areas that uh, have traditionally not been conducted in, at the University of Alabama with research topics. Our emphasis is to grow in these areas as well as to collaborate within the state and outside the state to uh, contribute to some of the issues that are facing um, society today.